Welcome, CP Finitians, and if you recall this music in the back, you may recognize it as the group Warrant, who sing the song Cherry Pie. Well, what are we getting into this unit? What are bar graphs and pie charts? Okay, so how appropriate that Warrant will bring us in with cherry pie. So let's turn them down for a second, but let's get into it, okay? The first piece of this um, unit is going to be pretty simple because you're just making bar graphs. Okay, so creating a bar graph, the main aspect I want you to have for these, okay, you're older now, I do want you to have a title, and I want you to label your horizontal and your vertical axis labels, okay? For our sake, we are going to use the pie data. Okay, and I kind of went ahead already and decided what to make this. We have six different things, so um, just use your best knowledge when you go about. Make them the same size interval on your graph. Okay, and again, we want horizontal axis units, so these will be our different pi types. And the vertical axis will have the number of guests. Um, that's just referring to the restaurant survey guests um, for pi, okay? Looking at the numbers, it also just appears if we do every two is 10, um, that will get us our best looking graph. So um, just kind of setting those up. You do want to try and take up the most space on your graph as possible. And I believe we need to go up to about 90. 60, 70, 80, 90. I really like it when students use colors, especially if they correspond to like the type. So we have 70 in the Oreo column. So if you like, well, blacks for Oreo, I guess. But maybe put like cookie shapes in there or something. That makes me happy. Um, peanut butter, mm, peanut butter is kind of orangish, uh, more of a brownish, I suppose. So we'll try and pick a brown here. Pen would be in the yellows, yes. Okay, and we have 50 peanut butters. I, I personally think there should be a little bit more of the peanut butter enjoyers. Okay, apple and so forth. Okay, so apple um, 65. Do, 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 do. And cherry, that's what I probably should have used red for. Um, we'll use purple, why not, um, 85, and you guys get the idea of this here, so I might even just skip ahead and have the whole graph plotted for you, okay? For whatever reason, purple is cherry, um, pumpkin is orange, And shoe fly is 20. Okay, it does help me at least if you label each of the sections, but you don't have to. Um, again, it just kind of makes it nice. So a basic bar graph. Now what gets a little more troubling is to make pie charts. And I did give you all a protractor to analyze. The one thing you will need to do is kind of estimate where the center is. I won't be too picky or I will try to give you the center of the circle. So take a moment to try and eyeball the center of it. Um, I'll do that in the future for you, hopefully. Um, but to take our information and to make a pie chart out of it, um, really, you just need to do a few things. So first, you're going to want to tally up all of your favorites, okay? Or all, in this case, all the numbers, okay? We're gonna tally them all up. I took the liberty, and so conveniently, it adds to 360. Okay, yes, it kind of helps out with the circle. It won't always equal that. Next, you need to find what percent of people liked each type. Okay, to do that, you're going to take the Oreo in our case, so 70. You're going to divide it by the total 360. And that will give you roughly a decimal. Now, I get 0.194 repeating, okay? You can just round to three spots. I won't be super picky, um, but at least three spots will help you out, okay? Um, I also took the liberty and did the other. So peanut butter, again, you're taking 50 over 360, and you get about 0.139. 
um, 65, again over 360, point one eight one and yes they should be decimals because they're percents uh, then we go for and point two three six okay hopefully you're getting the idea um, point one nine four and point zero six now just a little check is if you tally all these up okay since we're dealing with percentages it should add up to around 100% and if I do this, I get 1.004, and that is pretty close, okay? Since we're rounding, it won't be exact. Um, if you're one or two off, um, that's okay. Um, but just do that double check. If you're something like 10 off, um, just re-round everything, okay? The next step, because, okay, if you have those, how in the world are you going to plot 194 degrees? Well, in order to do that, you're going to take this column and instead of dividing by 360, um, you're going to multiply by 360. Now, I don't want you to be confused with this 360 here. Um, this is always multiplying by 360, okay, always. To find degrees of a circle, you're always multiplying by 360. Okay, I just did this to try and help us get nice numbers. Now, what happens when you take 0.194 times 360, you get 69.84. Okay, again, I won't be too picky as to where you round that. I choose to round it up to about 70 degrees. And I'm going to make that mark that I rounded up, okay, just to keep track of it. Um, if you take 0.139 times, again, 360, and this, again, is the 360 of a circle, okay, I get roughly 50.04, which, if I round down, is about 50. So the idea is, after all my rounding, I want to have about the same number that I rounded up as I round it down. That will just make everything a little nicer for us. 65.16, that is about 65 degrees. Again, I rounded down for that. Um, you get around 84.96, which is about 85 degrees if I round up. And then you get 69.84 again, which is about 70 degrees rounding up. And the next one is about 0.06 times, so 21.6. And I'm going to round to 21 and actually round down. Now, if I add all these together, I get, okay, I should be around 360 degrees. I actually get 361, okay? And there's only 360 degrees in a circle. So what I'm actually going to do is, to make this the easiest fix, if I round that down to 20, um, that will help you out. Again, you don't need to be exactly perfect. I'm only one off in that case. Um, it'll just help you graph. Now, graphing as far as um, this is concerned, okay, we'll do a little bit of work in class, but you'll label up your protractor Okay, and I'm just going to eyeball this for the time being. Um, you'll label up your protractor, and basically you will so start at 180. You'll line it up center to center, and you'll just go through and find where 70 degrees is. It doesn't matter so much which direction you start. I know this is 90 degrees, okay? Um, so this is about 45. I wonder if I have a protractor in here. And shazam, all of a sudden there is a protractor. Sorry if we went off. Um, I just wanted to be real sure, and I was not very close, kind of with the 90 as to where my protractor was. Now, I have the liberty of being able to do this, but again, we are just going to take our degrees and kind of measure out where each of them is on the chart. So 70 degrees, okay, if I start at the 180, now I'd be looking at the smaller ones. Okay, 70 degrees is about here. Okay, so that's about a 70 chunk. Um, from there now, 50 degrees, well, this would be five, 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 degrees would be about this piece here. Um, from there, another 65 degrees, and there's different ways to go about this, but 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, right along that line about. Okay, that's my 65. So it's actually stopping right there. And your protractors will be able to help you out a little more. I'm just doing this quickly. Um, to not bore you too much, um, 65, and then of course you'd have 85, so counting from there to the 85, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, which makes sense because I was 5 over here, which I could have just figured out, and then we have another 70, and we have another 20. Um, so backwards, this would be 20. Okay. And then this should be around 70. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but again, use your compass to assist you in those, and you should be close um, with the circles there. Okay, so thanks for hanging in there for that. Now, the next piece is frequency and histograms. And I know you've done these in the past, but we do add a little bit more to them. Okay, the key thing with this is designing the frequency table. You'll be given data, and I will tell you where to start and how big to make your interval. That is the hardest thing I like to think about this. So we have our interval, 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 and we have our frequency. One thing we need to do really quickly um, just to help us out is we need to make everything. So this is going to be 34. Um, we'll keep this at 30, actually we'll make it 32, um, and we'll make this 34. So do that for yourself real quick. It'll just make it nicer for us. Now the key thing is, I'm starting my interval where? At zero, okay? With a size of five. So here's the easiest way to do it. I start at zero, whew, tough. With an interval of five years. Now here's what students want to do. They go, okay, well that just means I go zero to five. No, okay, don't do that. Erase it if you did. Um, what you should do instead is go zero and then your interval five, so plus five. Okay, plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five. That tells you where to start each one. Because really, an interval of five starting at zero has zero, one, two, three, four, five numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four. This is your interval of five numbers. Okay? And really, this number tells you where to stop the next bunch at. Okay? So the key thing is setting up your intervals because they need to be equal. Okay? And then from there, you just go ahead and you find the frequencies, okay? So one at a time, just kidding, okay? I did take the liberty to go ahead. And if you tally all these up, you get five, you get three, one, two, five, three, and six, okay? So you can do that, of course, for your data. Um, the reason I changed these was so they fit into the last interval. Now, when you're making your graph, again, you want the same size interval, and you also want labels again. So, um, I made every two, so this is the interval 0 to 5, okay? Um, every two, this would be 10. This will be 15, 20, 25, 30, and I know we don't get there, but 35. And I also say that these arcs, you want units, I want these to say these are intervals of 5. On the left, we have our frequency. Okay, um, I choose to use every 2 as 1, so this is 1. Again, you want to use up as much space as you can, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and going from there, you just plot 
your different frequencies. So just like a bar graph, only um, a histogram. The other thing with histograms is there are never open spaces unless there's nothing. So they should be right next to one another. I'll talk about that if it shows up. Um, there's three, um, one, two, uh, five, again, uh, so this actually, oops, could be a five there, sorry, um, five again, and then we have three and one, okay, so again, just be careful going through those, um, but that's basically the histogram. Um, cumulative frequency and ogives. Ogives. We got all sorts of rocking and rolling. It sounds scary, but really it's the easy thing. Okay. First off, it's really the same. We're going to use the same data as the interval and the frequency. Okay. So all these values are just going to be copied and pasted like this here. Okay, now the only thing different is we're making a cumulative frequency. So the cumulative frequency is adding up all the intervals as you start. So the first interval is always going to be the same. We're going to start at 5. Now what we're doing is we're going to add this to the next interval. Okay, so it's almost like we're looking from 0 to 9 right here. Okay, so that means I have the 5 from 0 to 4 plus the 3. So that means I'm going to have 8. Okay, well then if I'm looking from 0 to 14, I am going to have, well, the 8 from the others plus 1. I'm going to have 9. And that is the process that you follow. So you're accumulating all of the intervals. What you should always end up with is the total number of people that you surveyed, which in our case was 25. Okay, so cumulative, you're adding everything up. Now there will be questions like, what is the number of people that fall within the five to nine range? Well, the number we know as the frequency, but that's just because you're going backwards. So between five and eight, is three. Okay, um, now these are the points you use for the ogive. Ogive, ogive, whatever you need. These are your new y coordinates. Okay, um, we are going to use similar x coordinates for our intervals. So we'll say again zero and we'll say five, um, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Actually, we only need to go up to 25. Um, actually, 35, sorry. And again, we're going to have intervals of 5. But now, our cumulative frequency is going to look a little different. So I choose to go every 2. Um, every 1 unit is 2. So this is going to be 10. This will be 20. This will be 30. And just kind of eyeball the best you can. So, from, at interval 0, 4, I have 5, okay? So, I have the point 0, 5, okay? Um, actually, sorry, let me correct that. We're always going to start at 0, 0. And we're going to start at the end of the interval. So, from 0 to 4, it goes up to 5. So, 2, 4, 5. So, that's kind of where it starts. Okay, sorry. So again, this here is actually the coordinate point um, five five. Okay, basically you're just starting another interval. You always start at zero. Um, the next step, okay, five to ten. Okay, that means at the ten spot we're going to be up to eight. So there's five. We have six, uh, seven. We have eight. Okay, so that's eight. Here's five. And that's eight. Um, then we just go up one at nine. Um, over to the 20 mark, um, we're at 11. Um, at the 25 mark, we're at 16. 
At the 30 mark, we are at 19. And then at the 35 mark, we are all the way up to 25. Okay. Um, again, so 20, 2, 4, yes. These are connected with a straight line. And the O gyve, okay, should always be increasing, increasing or flat, because um, you're accumulating points. So it looks funky, but that is the O gyve, or the cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency um, graph for that, okay? Um, be careful, again, your intervals and everything like that. That's the hardest thing I like to think. Um, thank you very much. You will practice continuing on. But just for your information, I would like you to um, put onto Google Classrooms um, how you find the number of degrees... in a pi section. Okay, so describe the process, and then while you're at it, I want to know your favorite flavor. Favorite, favor, it. Wow. Pi flavor. Mm, okay, so thanks guys, and um, uh, of course, work on the practice, and everything like that, and have a wonderful day.